from MTN Sports, this is the Brawl of the Wild Replay. Rivalries are created by history, inspired by pride, fueled by passion, and passed down through generations. Today on a 100-yard patch of turf in the Treasure State, Montana's centuries-old rivalry is ignited once again as the Cats and the Grizz battle on the gridiron for the 121st time. Houses will be divided, friendships tested, and memories made. What is at stake? A season, bragging rights, and a trophy that divides the state. The Brawl is next on MTN. On the final week of the regular season, most eyes in the college football world are set on the Gallatin Valley. A lot at stake as number three Montana State looking for a big sky title battles the 13th ranked Grizzlies, who to many are playing for a playoff berth in this, the 121st edition of the Brawl of the Wild. And for a big game like this, we need a big broadcast crew as we welcome you high above Bobcat Stadium, everyone, alongside the former Montana State and Montana defensive coordinator Ty Gregorak, as well as the former Montana QB and coach Marty Morningweg. I'm Ben Creighton. Ashley Washburn and Jake Cohn will also join us down on the field. Guys, this is a rivalry that divides households. It divides towns big and small. It divides the entire state of Montana. Ty, I'll begin with you. You coached in a lot of these games. What makes Cat so special? Well, Ben, the whole week leading up to this is what's special. And today, it is cold. It is clear. We had game day in the house. It's a perfect day for the 121st brawl. And Marty, you've played in this game. I imagine it's got to be even more special for the guys playing on the field. Ben and Ty, you win this game. You get to live with it for the rest of your life. You lose the game, you have to live with it for the rest of your life. Montana State will get the ball to start out this brawl of the wild. The Grizz won the toss, they deferred. Let's get things started with the first quarter on the Brawl of the Wild replay. And Montana looking to play spoiler again. A little deja vu for Montana State. Again, they also had a chance to win the Big Sky title last year out in Missoula, but it was the Grizzlies who got that 29 to 10 win as Montana State looks to keep the trophy here in Bozeman. They have played this game 120 times, one of the longest tenured rivalries in all of college football, as they are going to tee it up. We've been hearing about this hype this entire week. Let's get it rolling as Marquis Johnson is back to return for Montana State. And they'll call fair catch inside the 10 yard line. So Montana State's offense coming onto the field. One of the best rushing attacks in all of the FCS. And Ty, I'll start with you. You and I have watched Tommy Malott. To quote Pat McAfee earlier today on College Game Day, that man is electric. Well, he is obviously Butte America right there. He's just special with his feet. He's dynamic with the ball in his hands. But I mean, just yeah, down in that low red zone, he calls his own number. He's got a lot of, a lot of scores. He's just doing a great job this season. Six in total offense in the Big Sky this season. 705 yards on the ground for Tommy Malad. As he keeps it on the first play, he finds a window. Able to escape one tackle, cuts back inside, and a strong start for Tommy Malad as he moves the sticks. And Marty. Robbie Houck with the stop for Montana. Now the leading tackler in program history. Derek Snell, the man in motion for Montana State. Now they give to Elijah Elliott. And Elliott busting through the hole. Gets into Grizzly territory. Two straight strong runs for the Bobcats to start this one. A lot with the keeper again. Gets to the edge. Down the fringe, cuts inside. Malott taken down at around the 12-yard line. Earlier this week, Bobby Houck said, hey, we may be the underdogs in this one, but we got the overall record as Elijah Elliott gets the carry, still on his feet, and able to battle close to the goal line. The keeper up the gut. About it all year, the perimeter blocking was outstanding to spring some of those big plays. A 75-yard drive as, again, like we mentioned, we got Cruz down on the field and we welcome in Jay Cohn for the first time this afternoon. Hey, Jay. Hey, guys. What an impressive drive for the Bobcats right down the field. I lost sight of them. Lots of injuries to bring you up to date on. Lucas Johnson, we're going to watch him start when the Grizzlies get the ball on offense. You just saw on defense, Patrick O'Connell was in there, the co-captain, Buck Buchanan Award finalist. 
but it didn't look like it made any difference to that Bobcat offense. That was an impressive uh, out of the box drive, huh? Meanwhile, Blake Lesnar has been solid as a kicker this season for Montana State. 53 touchbacks. It's going to be Malik Flowers letting it fly into the end zone. And now on the Montana State sideline, we go down to Ashley Washburn. You know, guys, there is simply no greater divide than the 121st Brawl of the Wild. It's a battle for the state, and it's a battle for this trophy right here. The great divide. The Grizz have been the keeper of this 306-pound bronze trophy over the past year. But on Thursday, they had to give it up so it could make its way to Bozeman. Norm Jones is a designated transporter and has been the last 21 years. Puts it in the back of his pickup truck and drives it to either or Brawl location. But now the question is, is he going to help the Grizz? Take it back to Missoula or to stay here in Bozeman, guys. Ashley, appreciate it. As we had a false start here on Montana to start out this first round. Montana State plays a lot of match coverage, so it's zone coverage with man principles inside it, though. And off going to Nick Osmo. And the redshirt sophomore able to get to the 39. Nolan Askelson with the stop for Montana State. Montana State is actually number 22 in the FCS right now in third down defense. Can they hold Johnson? And that one caught. Once again, Mitch Roberts, their top target in this Grizzly receiving core. And another first down as not as fast as Montana State, but this Grizzly offense continues to march down the field. Yeah, right, Ben. Uh, Montana State just went right down the field in just a handful of plays. Montana's having to work for it here. It's a good job by Mitch Roberts seeing that ball in, too, because it looked like Ben Seymour got, kind of got a hand on it. Deep shot from Lucas Johnson going to the end zone. Was that one hold in? Yes, touchdown, Montana. Talk about a big catch right there from Malik Flowers for their first trip to the end zone today. 30-yard completion. Malik is Montana's big play type guy. What a throw by the quarterback, Lucas Johnson. What an exciting game we have going on early in the first quarter. I, I was just going to say, what a, what a way to respond by Montana's offense to respond to that Tommy Mallott touchdown drive. Here in the Gallatin Valley as Montana State will take over again on offense on the first play of the series. They hand off to Elijah Elliott and Elliott bouncing off a couple tackles and gets near midfield. A strong run and a strong start so far for this Montana State offense. Near the bottom of your screen right now and they'll do this a lot. Montana State they'll use both QBs as Chambers with the keeper off the gut. Chambers past the 40 and into Grizz territory. Boy, Brent Vegan, you know this Bobcat faithful. Happy to see him back. Now the give to Malott. Malott spins and brought down just short of the 10. Co-offensive player of the week this past week. And that huge performance against Cal Poly. Malott in motion. They give it to him again. Malott maneuvering his way and dives over the end zone. Big Cat giving it to Little Cat and Montana State into the blue turf again. They ran this play two plays ago. It's an unbalanced formation. It's a quad set. Just trying to see how Montana's going to get it lined up. Yeah, they're motioning them a lot to the unbalanced quads, and that's their two for two on that. You know, Tommy Malat should be called Big Little Cat because he's playing big today. Butte America, coach, he runs hard. On the ground, Osmo with a strong run. To start this series for Montana and Osmo with a solid start. Man alive, this is an offensive explosion. Montana State doesn't usually bring a lot of pressure on these third and longs. You see a four-man rush here. Floats it up, out of bounds, trying to find Ryan Simpson. That was a vertical throw, a go route, and Lucas left it just a touch outside, and Lucas Johnson ends up on his buttocks after the throw. Good pressure again by the Montana State defensive line. Again, those false starts are going to kill him, though, and get him into those third and longs. That makes it tough on the offense. Well, Montana State's defense is the first to defense to slow an offense down here early. Taco Dowler back to return for Montana State. Oh, jeez. And that one gets away. Shades of Weber State. And that one is going to be scooped up in the end zone. And that's going to be a touchdown for Montana State. 
Boy, mistakes, penalties, and now you got a botched snap. The field is a touchdown. Rohrbach, the punter, should have just scooped that ball out of bounds there rather than allowing, taking a safety, rather than allowing Montana State to climb onto the football for a touchdown in the end zone. That one not even close. That one a good, maybe what, seven feet above his head. Yeah, co Coach, and we saw four of those in one game against Weber yeah. State. Eight points off of those plays right there, and they win by five points. Man alive, a turn of events here. The Bobcats could go up 21 to 7, and it's not even the end of the first quarter yet. Blake Lesnar on for another PAT. Yeah, and guys, you nailed it. I mean, that's a complete momentum turn right there for, for both teams, both teams, I should say. Big momentum, a little mo-mo, a little mojo, right? Okay, Montana State has all the momentum right now. We'll see if the Grizzlies can get a little momentum going their way as this first quarter comes to an end. It's crazy, I, you know, C Coach Houck is such a fantastic special teams coach, really made his mark and, and made a name for himself in this business by coaching special teams. And I know that, you know, in the last few games, or I know maybe not the last two, but, but this game and then, you know, a couple of those, when they were on that three-game skid, they had some crucial special teams errors. Yeah, they had some pooch kicks that bit them, right? They had a, a deep squib that hit one of the front line men against Sacramento State, bounced back to Sacramento State. They've had some kicks partially blocked and blocked, and then they got it straightened out. And then this was just one big mistake, right, by the, by the deep snapper uh, about 10 feet over the punter's head. And then another mistake by Rohrbach, just simply shuffle the ball out, out of the back. The Montana bounce back here. All alone, Johnson eludes a couple tacklers, and he can do this well, as well and take off with his legs, and he'll slide down into Montana State territory. That was a five wide receiver set, nobody in the backfield, so five man protection. And then Montana State ran a game, but they let Lucas Johnson loose just a little bit. And you don't want to do that too often to this quarterback. 256 yards on the ground this season for Johnson. Second and two. This time not able to escape him. Again, four-man rush. You're going to see a lot of this today, guys. Let's go back down to Ashley, who's joined by a special guest. I am joined by a special guest, Nick Faldo, six-time major winner. Now you could add guest picker to your resume. How was this morning on college game day? That was crazy. I've never done anything like that. And uh, so I'm very much a rookie. Um, so uh, I think I winged a, did a good job. <laughs> well, you picked the Bobcats, and the Bobcats have been a team that you have really been a fan of since moving to Bozeman this year. What has Bozeman meant to you since moving here earlier this year? Well, we thought about it, you know, a couple of years back. We bought we bought some property. Uh, we know we love it up here in Montana, and uh, so we moved up full time in, in August. You know, it was 100 degrees, and then here we are. Uh, yeah, a couple of months later, I opened the doors this morning for the dogs, and they all went, they, they backed off, they took a yard, they went, whoa. So, uh, yeah, we love it. We love the scenery, we love the lifestyle, we love the people, Montana people are great. And, uh, you know, and hopefully I can bring some golf here sometime, it would be great. Well, we needed to get a little warmer for that. But last question for me, 121st Brawl of the Wild, first time ever experiencing this. What are your thoughts looking at this crowd and just this atmosphere? You know, I'm coming from England, we have nothing, or Britain, we have nothing like this college atmosphere so i've always marveled at that how fortunate these guys and girls are you know to whatever sports they're playing to have so much support and it carries for the whole of their life it doesn't it? you know you meet businessmen in their whatever 60s 70s still support their colleges and what so you're very lucky in america for you know having this support having you know so much financial support to make this happen you know and these and these guys these guys are good, aren't they? They play with their hearts. This is a big day, so I'm loving it. Yeah. Well, it's a fun game. Thank you so much for your time, Nick. Back to you guys. Actually, appreciate it. That's that will end the first quarter here at Bobcat Stadium. A strong start for Montana State, a 21-7 lead for the third-ranked Bobcats here in the 121st edition of the Brawl of the Wild. Second quarter coming up on the other side.
Now, here's the second quarter on the Brawl of the Wild replay. Les Schwab scoreboard 21-7 Montana State as we get set to start the second quarter here in Bozeman. And I got to be honest, this is great weather. I know it was in the negatives this morning, but perfect right now. 20 degrees as we get set for this second quarter. I mean, that nails it right there on the Stockman Bank weather. Perfect football weather. You guys aren't going to complain about this whatsoever for a big game like this. No way. It's awesome. It's perfect. I'll tell you, stat-wise, first quarter, the Bobcats 162 yards rushing to Montana's two yards rushing. Not a single passing yard yet so far for Montana State. Here on third down, as Marty said during the break, this is a huge third down for Montana's defense trying to stop Tommy Mallott. And they're not going to do that as QB1 picks up a first down. He knows how runs should hit and where runs should hit. It just continues to show his growth as a player here for Montana State as right on cue will keep it on the ground again. It looks like he's going to get enough to move the sticks again. It's kind of like what Coach Baldwin was telling us last week, the head coach at Cal Poly. The best offenses are more balanced offenses. No question about that. Elijah Elliott with the carry. Another strong run for the guy who was at the top of the depth chart heading into this matchup against Montana. Being behind it just a little bit. Derek Snell, the man in motion for Montana State. Malat doing work with his legs again. And deja vu, another first down thanks to Tommy Malat. One to seven. Here in the second quarter as they got R.J. Fitzgerald also into the game now for the Bobcats. Tommy Malat again lined up in that wide receiver position. Malat in motion. Chambers going to his right, cuts back inside, dancing to the five. Chambers picking up a first down. What a great run. A couple broken tackles. This man, Chambers. So fourth and goal, Chambers all alone, looking for an opening, and finally he gets in and breaks over the plane. But there is a flag. This will be an interesting call here by the officials. I, 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 Roy well, Phil, it's a touchdown. Offside. Defense, Defense yeah. number six. That's how it's fly. Justin Ford was trying to get a jump uh, and trying to get into the Bobcat backfield again. It was a little early. 17 rushing touchdowns now for Sean Chambers on the year. And, Man, and he's missed lie. the last three games. Right. He's missed the last three weeks. Crazy. I mean, Montana, Montana knows what's coming. If number 10 is the quarterback, they know what's happening. It's just a matter of stopping it. As we now go down to Ashley Washburn and Jay Cohn again. Well, you know, Montana State and Montana, they take so much pride in recruiting these Montana kids. And with that, there are a lot of family ties. There's four sets of brothers on this Bobcat uh, team. We've got the Fitzgerald brothers. RJ and Jason get this their dad actually played for the Grizz but he's definitely a Cats fan now the Dowler brothers they're two twins from Billings the Perkins brothers is a trio of them and their dad actually played for the Grizz in the late 90s and then Callahan O'Reilly and McCade O'Reilly and I know that there's a bunch over on the Grizz side as well Jay well that's right Ashley of course the first family of Montana Grizzly football is the Hauk family back head coach Bobby Hauk his brother Tim who wore the legacy number 37 and then Robbie Howe, Bobby's son, and little known, but he's also got a nephew, Ryan Terrell, who went to Missoula Loyola's. So it's a big family tree on the Grizz sideline. I asked Bobby Howe his first memory of the Brawl of the Wild. Him and Tim used to play basketball and listen to the game on the radio while we were playing a horse. Back to you guys. Try to stay in this first half. Lucas Johnson in the pistol. To give to Osmo. And pulling a couple bodies. To about the 42 yard line. Osmo, a hard runner. Well, you were talking about it, Ben. The Grizz need to get this down to two scores before halftime so they can go into halftime with a little momentum. Callahan O'Reilly on the tackle there for the Bobcats. After. Flowers in motion, and he gets the carry. Flowers bounces to the outside, gets the edge. Flowers with one man to beat and wrapped up by his ankles. A touchdown saving tackle possibly by Daniel Louis Lakepa. Play fake. Roberts 
stays on his feet. Roberts brought down just short of the goal line. Bunched up on the line. And Johnson lost the football. And it's going to be hauled in by Montana State. To get into that turnover ratio thing, the deep snap over the punter's head was one touchdown. And then they take a waste of it here by putting the ball on the ground and Montana State recovering it. Defense. Alondo with the keeper, and he's got open turf. And he'll pick up a first down and a whole lot more as he gallops out of bounds. McAfee is such a great addition to that show, though. I, I, I just love how refreshing he is to listen to. There's Drayton Pickering to the 50, and Pickering taken down short of the 40. And where's he from, Ben? Sunburst, Montana! So two solid coaches, both on the sidelines today for both squads. Malat on the keeper. Yeah, the lady. Yes, the bleachers. It's just weird. Yeah. Again, a 34-yarder for Blake Lesnar. And that one good. Just snuck in. But again, a strong first half from this Montana State offense. 31-7 to at the break here in the 121st edition of Cat Grizz and I mean that's the big talking point right now coming into this matchup we were so interested to see hey how is this Montana State rushing attack going to go up against this stout Montana defense it's been the exact opposite yeah, yeah. no it's I, I, I'll be honest I didn't see this coming I really didn't I, I knew Montana State was going to run the ball I just didn't think they would run it this well against an excellent defense 31 to 7 though I I, I, I I did not see this one coming it's just surprising to me all of the broken tackles by the Montana State football team. Halftime coming up next. Time for the third quarter on the Brawl of the Wild replay. Well, I'd imagine two different sidelines as we get set to start the third quarter here at Bobcat Stadium. Brent Vegan's bunch up 31-7 on Bobby Houck's number 13 ranked Montana Grizzlies. And like we talked about at halftime, the Grizz will get the ball to start this third quarter. And I know I sound cliched, Marty, but they got to score. They got to have a solid drive to keep themselves in this ballgame. Totally agree. And this early in the game, that's unusual that we have to say that. But I do think, Ty, and... Uh, ben, it's real here. Another booming kick from Blake Lesser that will fly into the back of the end zone. And let's go back down to Ashley Washburn, who caught up with Bobcat head coach Brett Vegan. Electric first half of offense, offense, defense, special teams. You guys are firing on all cylinders. What did you see in that first half? Well, we came out with a plan. I think the guys really executed well on offense. Uh, you know, Lyman opened up holes, whether it was Tommy, Sean, Elijah ran really hard that, that first half. Uh, we were staying ahead of the chains and putting the pressure on them. Defensively, we had score that first time, but I thought we really bowed up after that. Now we have got the special teams plays, and uh, we got another half football to play, though. Another half of football to play. Are you making any adjustments in this second half? Are you happy with what this team is doing so far? No, I think this, this first drive, we got you know, on the defense, we've got to come out and go after them. You know, and other than that, we, get, we just got to keep going after it. You know, 0-0 uh, zero, zero mentality here at halftime. Awesome. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, they got the space eaters down on that Grizz sideline. Third down, Johnson all alone in the backfield. Lots of time in the pocket and slings it to Roberts. And Roberts cuts inside, and he's going to be brought down just short of uh, that first down marker to bring up fourth down. Oh, it's big. It's for sort of, there's a nice pass play. Beautiful touch. Derek Snell on the haul. He gets near midfield. Right by, the, there. by the way, I love how Pat McAfee used Alaskan Assassin he earlier did. today on the game day setting. He there goes right again. to him again. Cuts inside the big tight end, rumbling inside the 30. It's to put the ball on the ground. 
Going to Marquis Johnson, following some blockers. Johnson tearing up the frigid turf, and Johnson strikes into the end zone. And the rushing attack for the Bobcats continuing to absolutely roll. It all starts with Brian Armstrong's offensive line and Coach Tyler Walker's tight ends. You're going to see Drayton Pickering on the edge here, hat on a hat, and then the rest is just Marquis Johnson using that speed. Zone blocking, finds the hole, sees air. Great cutback, over pursuit by the Grizzly defense, walks in. The angles taken by the Grizzlies defense, they've been underestimating the speed of the Bobcat runners. Montana offense looking for any sort of momentum and a strike over the middle completes that one to Aaron Fonts. They need to get going. Johnson throws again, this time finds his tight end and Cole Grossman spins from a tackle and a first down for the tight end out of Vancouver, Washington. And let's go back down to Jay Cohn who's on the Montana sideline. Well, it's rather cold on this sideline after that first half by the Bobcats. I did get a chance to talk to Bobby Hawk when he came out. He said the Grizz just need to quit shooting themselves in the foot. Dropping the ball at the goal line, the punter, the long snapper, hiking it over the uh, punter's head. And I said, what's with the long snapper in this stadium? Of course, the Weber State uh, long snapper in those four safeties. He said, I wish I knew what was going on. But he said, what we can do is come back and have a great comeback victory. But right now, it's an uphill battle. Back to you guys. Thanks, Jay. Appreciate it. A lot of pride in that trophy. Second down. Johnson, that one picked off. Ryland Ort, the young man from Missoula, Montana, coached by Dane Oliver at Sentinel High School. What a big time play. That's big for that young man coming out of a Missoula High School. He gets a pick in the brawl of the wild. So I was mentioning there's 93 players on both these programs from Montana. 18 from right here in Bozeman, 17 from Missoula. No, it's a good point, you know, and this, this guy, you know, he runs the ball a lot. He's the, he's the team's leading rusher, but like I say every week, he's from Butte, America. He's tough. <laughs> he likes getting hit. He likes throwing out shots. Watch this. He... Together, they can kind of shuffle the deck, as he says, if one guy's not performing. That just shows how strong this O-line is, and every time you bring up a question to him about the running game, he's going to say every single time, it starts with the O-line, as they create a big hole again for Marquis Johnson, and Johnson wrapped up near the 15. This will be a 29-yarder now for Blake Lesnar, who has been solid this afternoon. And he adds on to that. And Johnson right now 14 of 23 for 137 yards. Runs up the gut, and there he goes. And he'll slide down at about the 35-yard line. And he's shaken up. Yeah, he, that, that leg injury that he had last week I'm not sure he was quite 100% coming in. Brett, nowhere to go. That D line for Montana State getting it done again. Quarterback draw. Yeah, why throw it? Let Tommy be Tommy. First down, move the chains. That was kind of cool because they did no back empty, right? And then they brought the tight end into the backfield. And then they ran quarterback draw with a lead blocker. And nice block by him as well. Just an absolute offensive clinic here on a sunny afternoon in Bozeman, Montana. 459 total yards for this Bobcat offense. Getting to the outside, Elijah Elliott past the 30. And near the 27-yard line. Man alive. It's rare that Montana State running the football on first down wasn't second and eight. I mean, you know, uh, uh, so many times they were second, I mean, excuse me, second and one or two, right? Most of the time, they're second one or two, second and five, second and four. All game long, Ty. Yeah, you can see Coach Hawk step on the field. He's bringing his entire squad up right now. Coach Vegan's doing the same, but... This Montana outfit, it, it's just what we've seen for three quarters, man. It, it's just crazy to be watching. I mean, they were at one point number two in the country, hotter than heck. They've won, they've won the last two by, you know, a thousand to seven or whatever you said a few <laughs> minutes ago, Ben. And it's just cra crazy to see in, in, in a game of this magnitude to be watching what we're watching. Montana State looking to keep that thing here in Bozeman. Fourth quarter next.
Get ready for the fourth quarter on Grizzly Replay. The lot goes under center. The jump pass from Derek Snell. Touchdown, Montana State showing off the trickery. One tight end goes to another in Trayton Pickering. Tom Moore here in 2022. Can't get more involved than that. And again, earlier today, game day. An absolute scene here in Bozeman. Trying to escape and able to elude a tackle. Britt getting to the 45 and brought down near the 50 on the previous drive. Britt, lots of time, will use his legs. And he'll try to get out of bounds as he gets to the 39-yard line. He's trying to escape and able to elude a tackle. Britt getting to the 45 and brought down near the 50. They're playing their butts off. They're, yeah. they're, 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 you know, great angles, great tackling. They're playing hard. Yeah. Yeah, and usually when you win the whole thing, as a, a, a running offense, you usually have a great defense. And they're playing really well today, aren't they? Up until that pass. Yeah, Brent with a strike right there to Ryan Simpson to get them in the red zone. Ryan Simpson, a Bozeman kid. Brent under pressure, escapes two tackles, and he's got open turf. Britt inside the 10, and Britt leaps for the pylon and stopped just short. Well, that's where when you're a defensive coordinator, you're rubbing your temples because they dialed up a perfect pressure. That's Jory Choke, son of former head coach Jeff Choke, coming off the edge. He's got him dead to rights, and he misses the play. He was just a little shallow right there. What you, You've got a bottle leash type of quarterback. So. Get ready for the fourth quarter on Bobcat Replay. Chambers now in a QB. Chambers, he's got space. Chambers turning on the Jets inside the 10. And Chambers reaching for the goal line and stopped just short. Boy, this rushing attack. Montana, they just have no, no solutions today. Coach Vegan made one of the gutsiest, smartest decisions ever by benching the starting quarterback and going with the young man out of Butte. And all he's done since is win. How about another native Montana? RJ Fitzgerald gets the touchdown. I was just very lucky to be a part of some really good teams with a lot of great boys. R.J. Fitzgerald reaches over the goal line. 55-14 here in the fourth. I'll never forget the last time I was a part of one of these deals was 2018. We just had an unbelievable win in Missoula. Goal line stand. They've made a dang documentary on it. And then we have a little watch party the next day. And I'm way in the back. And I look at my wife and I go, that's not North Dakota State. Next, is it? After Incarnate Ward. I'm going, oh, God. All, all roads usually... Run through Fargo at this time of year, Coach. Yeah. Cole Grossman with the touchdown for Montana. I think it's going to come but back. It's coming man. back. Yep. Yeah, that's too bad. Nice pass. Nice catch. Grossman. I think he's an underrated tight end it's for the, the Grizz. It's a touchdown. Act plays over. Personal foul. Late hit. Offense number 55. That 15-yard penalty being forced on the kickoff. This morning, absolute craziness here in Bozeman with college game day coming to town. Cat Grizz, who you got? I need to go thaw out, so real quick, real easy, Bobcats. Bobcats, Bobcats. It is. let's go. Absolutely. I'm going with the Bobcats. I like Montana yeah, State. Give me the Grizzlies! Paul Anderson! Mark Manning! <laughs> you think I'm a big Montana? Huh? No. no. Crazy. Give it a cat ass. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Well, Pat McAfee, the only one to pick the Grizzlies. Everybody else went with Montana State, and obviously, you see the result 55 21 with under two minutes to play. Well, Tommy, touchdown Tommy Malat, financial engineering major, and thinks med school. He's a 4.0 student. And there's the rush to the trophy as it will return to Bozeman and the Montana State Bobcats for the first time since 2012 will win the Big Sky title. And of course the question becomes, will it be shared or an outright? We'll find out later as the trophy comes back to Bozeman. 
It's taken a bunch of big fellas to carry that trophy. It's over, over, it's over 300 pounds, coach. I mean, it takes some big dudes. 306 pounds, yes, I believe. Yes, he can't carry that with one fella. Get a hernia or something. Yes, sir. Yeah. No, shoot. I, I, I know one program is for sure probably going to be off for Thanksgiving. They're going to be a top seed in Montana State. And now it's just a waiting game on, on, on the maroon and silver. And they earned that by week. Let's go down to Ashley. I got, I got Justice Perkins here, center for this offensive line. 400 yards on the ground. You guys have just been a force this season. You guys have a Big Sky Conference championship and the Great Divide Trophy. What's going through your head? Man, uh... Oh, this honestly so blessed to be part of this team, man. That's a special unit. No one believed in us at the beginning of the season. So we came out to prove everyone game in and game out. And uh, I'm on cloud nine. I'm on cloud nine. You just said it yourself at the beginning of this season. There was so much noise surrounding this offensive line. You guys have a Big Sky Conference championship and this Brawl the Wild trophy. What do you got to say to those people? I mean, <laughs> I can't say it on TV, but man, we, we, we still got to work no matter what. We still got to get after it. We can see our opponents next week and get ready to go. Last question here. You look at this crowd. No one is going to leave for a long, long time. There's so much to celebrate. What do you have to say to Bobcat Nation? Oh, man, we love you guys. I wouldn't be, it wouldn't be anything without you guys. Energy in and out of the game. All home games sold out, man. I love Bobcat Nation. I'm glad I'm here. Thanks, Justice. Go celebrate. Yeah, again, it's going to be really interesting to see that playoff selection show tomorrow if Montana gets in. And speaking of the playoffs, here is the schedule. Of course, the first round coming up next weekend. You got the FCS championship all the way on January 8th. Who's going to be playing it? Looks like they're trying to tear down the goalposts here at Bobcat Stadium. Let's go back down to Ashley Washburn, who's standing by with Tommy Mallott. You know, it took me a while to get Tommy Mallott because they were already in there in the locker room celebrating. You, not only did you guys win the Brawl of the Wild, you guys are also Big Sky Conference champions. First time in 10 years. What did this feel like right now? Feels amazing. We've been working our butt off all year. Uh, we knew that this was, you know, this was one of our goals for sure, uh, being conference champs, owning the state of Montana, and uh, we had a great opportunity to come out here, play in front of a great home home field, and uh, it feels great. It feels great. We've been saying a lot these last couple of games is how dominant this offensive line has been. There was so much noise surrounding, you know, the youngness of this offensive line. For you guys to rush for over 400 yards today and then see them carry that broad the Wild Trophy, what did that mean to you? It means the world. I, I know that those guys have been doubted, you know, since the spring. I knew that. Every single headline was talking about the offensive line, and I knew they were going to be good. I knew they were going to be great. Like, I, I'm just so excited that we had an opportunity to come out here this year and for them to dominate, because I knew that they'd do it, and I've shown it every single game. I mean, they work they work harder than any any group of people I know in, in any other in any other aspect of my life. So I'm uh, extremely proud of those guys, and, and uh, I'm not surprised at all. You know, this game has been over for a while right now, and you take a look at all these fans that are here celebrating you and this team right now. What does Bobcat Nation mean to you? Uh, it means the world. I mean, just having uh, that sellout crowd uh, record, you know, attendance out here to support us, a uh, ton of energy, a ton of, uh, you know, just, just having those guys behind us is, is amazing. We obviously got to talk about this game. You guys beat the Grizz on your own turf. What did that mean to you? Heck, uh, last year we went down there. Uh, we for sure uh, didn't didn't meet up to our expectations, and uh, you know, just being able to you know flip the and reverse the roles this year uh, feels great. And I'm just uh, you know I'm genuinely genuinely I want to say you know to stay stay away from those guys over there. Quit quit uh you know, tr quit trying to dehumanize those guys over there, trying to get into their bus. Don't be messing with them. I know what it feels like. We felt it last year. You know, those guys are, they work harder than, you know, 90% of, you know, people that just uh, put themselves in position to play the play this game and, and the dedication they have to, you know, have as well. So, you know, please just respect them and, and uh, you know, take care of those guys. Great words by Tommy Malott. You know, I know you guys have a party going on in that locker room right now, so I'll let you get back in there. Thanks, Tommy. Well, now let's go back down, this time with Jay Cohn, who's standing by with Montana head coach Bobby Houck. Well, thank you, uh, Ben, uh, Bobby, not the afternoon you had envisioned. Uh, how do you put this in perspective moving forward? Well, first of all, sorry for ghosting you at halftime, yeah, all right? That's right. <laughs> uh, second, you know, they just whipped us. I mean, they, they, they played well today. They had, a, they had a nice plan for us. We didn't uh, stop them in their plus one offense and, and the run game with the quarterback run game, and that, that's how they got us. 
So we have the playoff uh, bracket show tomorrow. I know you're hoping you get in. What are your thoughts? Well, I think we'll get in. I, I can't imagine we won't, but, uh, you know, we need to see what that means tomorrow. We'll see who it is. All right. I'll see you on the coach's show tomorrow, okay? Tomorrow. All right. Robbie, can you uh, put this uh, season in perspective? Kind of a, a roller coaster, and it didn't end the way you wanted it to, but uh, what are your thoughts right now? Well, obviously, it's disappointing. You know, credit to them. They were ready to go, and we weren't uh, We weren't able to make plays when they presented to us, and uh, we got to fix that going into hopefully the postseason and um, build from there. The snowball started rolling down here. It was pretty tough for that defense. You guys were on the field the whole whole game. Yeah, I mean, anytime you play a team like this that runs the ball well, you got to be able to make tackles and get off blocks and, you know, get in the backfield, and we weren't able to do that and execute our game plan properly, so that's on us as players. For Jay Cohn, Ashley Washburn, Marty Morningweg, and Ty Gregorak. I'm Ben Creighton saying so long from Bozeman, Montana, where the Great Divide Trophy comes back to Bozeman. So long, everyone.